What's up you guys? Welcome back to another video here on my channel. My name is Carson Lee, current professional baseball player. And today, I want to give you guys some advice on how to choose the right college for you. I know the last few years of high school, whenever you're going through the recruiting process, you're trying to get seen by college coaches, you're trying to get on these college campuses, and you're trying to secure yourself a spot on a team and a scholarship. I know it can be a stressful time, and a lot of people may not know which direction to go and, and kind of the path that you're going to take. So today, I want to try to give you guys some guidance and some help on how to make that process a little bit easier. But before we hop into the video, real quick guys, all I ask is that if you are a new viewer to my channel, I ask that you click that subscribe button. Be sure to leave me a comment down below. Let me know that you subscribe. I will be I read through all my comments and I will be replying back to every single one of them. If you want to stay up to date with me, follow me on Instagram at Carson Lee 5 and also join my text community where I send out daily uplifting and positive messages. I like to connect with my audience so it gives you a chance to be able to engage with me one on one via text message. Send me a text 713 929 2995. I thank you guys for clicking that subscribe button. I'm very grateful to have you guys viewing my video. But for now, let's go ahead and jump into the topic of the video, me giving you guys some advice on how to choose the correct college program for you. Now, over the course of my career, I've been very fortunate to have a bunch of experiences through baseball. I've been fortunate to face a ton of adversity. I've been fortunate to have many ups, many peaks, many mountains. And I've also been fortunate to have many valleys and, and very many low points. I say fortunate because I'm a believer that you don't fail in life. There's no such thing as failing. You either win or you learn. So all those those failures throughout baseball, baseball is a game of failure, right guys? Throughout all those failures in baseball, I was able to learn from each of those experiences. They made me a better baseball player and they made me a better person. Because of those experiences, I like to speak from that perspective whenever I'm talking to young athletes, young students of the games, and talk to them through my experience and what I experienced and how I can guide them to make, make the next best decision. So I want to give you guys a brief history of my journey up to this point. So after my junior year in high school, so the summer leading up to senior year, it was looking like there was going to be an opportunity for me to go to a small D1 right out, out of high school, which I was very excited about. Unfortunately, the coach at that school left which completely squashed that opportunity. At the beginning of my senior year, I then changed my mind and started looking more towards junior colleges because I wanted to be able to go to a two-year school and have the opportunity to possibly get drafted after my freshman or sophomore year. I wanted to get immediate playing time, and I also wanted to kind of reset my GPA going and getting all my general classes done. So I changed my mind looking more into junior colleges. I went on a visit over Christmas break and had a junior college that was very interested in me. I verbally committed. Next thing you know, I don't hear from the school. And I wound up not signing till early July. I went to a workout in June and I signed to Tyler Junior College. And so I went to Tyler for my first year and a half. My first year I redshirted. And then my second year, when I came back for my red shirt freshman year. I left at Christmas break and transferred to North Lake Junior College in Dallas, Texas. I played my quote unquote freshman year at North Lake Junior College and at the end of the year I got an offer to go play Division One baseball at Prairie View A&M which is a small Division One school right outside of Houston and that is where I wound up spending the last three years of my college career. So those are my past experiences that I speak from. Now I know the process of, of recruiting can be confusing, it can be difficult, it can be long, and it can be stressful. That is something I will make a video of in the future, and if that is a video you would be interested in seeing, please leave this video a thumbs up. Let me know so I can kind of get an idea of how many people would be interested in seeing that. But through your recruiting process, guys, you have to understand that your timeline is not going to be the same as everybody else's. And it's completely okay. Where you start is not what, what's important. Where you end up is what's important. How you develop is what's important. So don't get caught up, you guys, on your friend is, is verbally committed to this big D1 school and he's going to sign in the early signing period and he's going to have it all taken care of you know, for the rest of the school year. Or you're not getting any interest at all. It's your senior year. Your high school season begins. 
and you're still not really hearing very much and you don't sign to a school until late July. Both of those timelines are okay, you guys. I want you guys to understand that because that alone could be a lot of stress whenever it comes to finding the right college and also it's going to affect your your senior season because if that's if you're allowing that to weigh on your mind that's all you're going to be able to think about and you're not going to be able to play loose and play with a clear mind right off the bat that is that is one of my biggest pieces of advice i can give you guys is not to let your friend's journey or other people's journey be an influence to you don't compare yourself to somebody else that's comparison is the thief of joy now my second piece of advice begins with looking yourself in the mirror and figuring out what your goals for the next four or five years of your collegiate life look like. Are you a guy that has aspirations of playing professional baseball? Are you a guy that wants to go to college and baseball is kind of just a byproduct that you don't really care one way or another if you play, you kind of just want to be on the team? If you're a guy that just wants to go and play college baseball and then be done, those are the things that you guys need to start thinking about as far as what's your goals and what do you want out of college because that is going to be a big determining factor on which college program you're going to choose. So you start having these college programs come in and you have to start evaluating each situation. I think that it helps to look at each program with how it aligns with your goals and what you want out of it. One of the most important things I think you can look for when choosing a college program is how is that coach going to help you develop over the next four or five years that you're in school. Because guys, I look back and even though I redshirted my first, first year and I spent a year and a half at Tyler Junior College, I went through two falls with them, I look back and I look at all the reps that I got, like, every day. Mass Fungo, Mass BP, those were two staples of our practice plan every single day. I just think about all the reps that I was, I was getting to develop. For me, you guys, I think one of the most important things is looking how each program is going to help you develop and how that development affects your goals. If you're a guy that has aspirations of playing, of playing professional baseball, that's cool if you go to Vanderbilt or Texas A&M or UT right outside of high school. But if you don't play for those first two, three years, and all you do is practice and you get 20, 30, 50 at-bats, you know, first year and the second year, what good is that actually doing you? You're not getting the game reps to be able to, to develop. So you're holding yourself back from getting that professional opportunity. Because now you only have two years to open someone's eyes. Now, I know there's some cases where guys go in their freshman year and play and dominate. But we're just talking about on, on a general level. level to Just a general average baseball player or whatever. So that's the things you guys you know need to think about. If you're a guy that has aspirations of playing professional baseball, junior college, I think, is a more preferable route for you because you get to step right in and have the opportunity to play as a freshman and get 100, 200, 300 at-bats. You're going to get the at-bats in the fall, you're going to get the at-bats in the spring. You're going to get the daily reps all day because there's no NCAA uh, rules and violations for how to run a practice like there is in Division One. So you can practice all day and get an unlimited amount of reps. So those two years that you play at junior college versus sitting on the bench at a Division One school, there's a big difference in that, and I think a lot of guys get caught, get so caught up in looking at the name of the school that they forget about that. And once again, you guys, I'm going to reiterate, that's where your goals got to align with the program. If you're the guy that just wants to go to college and be a part of the baseball team, and you have Division One offers, then hey, maybe that's the right opportunity for you because you can go to school, you can be social and you can be on the baseball team and you playing is not a very big priority. You're just there to enjoy college and enjoy baseball. And guys, I want you to understand there is nothing wrong with that. I understand that the dreams that I have for myself and the goals I have for myself are not the same for every single kid that is playing baseball. And I, I that is a, something that I stress of importance to, to the kids that I teach, that you don't have to have the same goals as me. but. Your goal should include that whatever length of time you desire to play the game, you should want to get the most out of yourself. So if you only desire to play in high school, you should want to be the best damn high school player that you can be. 
If you only want to play in college, you should desire to be the best damn college baseball player that you can be. Whatever your goals are, it's fine, but you should be aligned with those goals because I promise you, if you go to a school and you're the guy that has aspirations of playing professional baseball and two years in, you haven't gotten very many at-bats and you feel like you're not getting exposure, mentally, you're going to be very frustrated and you're not going to be happy. It's not going to be a healthy situation, so that's why I'm trying to expand on this with you guys and help you all understand that your goals and the college program need to align. That's my biggest piece of advice that I can give you guys. Figure out your goals and figure out how each program that is a possible destination, figure out how your goals align with that program. Whether it's Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, or NAIA. Guys, it doesn't matter. An opportunity to play college baseball is, is an opportunity in itself that should not be overlooked. Playing college baseball is one of the greatest joys that you will have. It's so much fun being a, a college athlete on campus. A few other pieces of advice that I can give you guys is create a relationship with a coach before you sign anything. Yes, have that player-coach conversation and relationship, but also have some personal uh, conversations with him just to kind of get an idea of who he is as a, as a person, what his coaching style is like, because that also plays a big decision into choosing the correct program is making sure you're going to a school that you have good chemistry with the coach and you enjoy being under that coach so create that that bond with and have an idea of what his coaching style is like because you don't want to go to a school where you don't fit their coaching style if you're a big power hitting let's say corner guy playing third or first and you like to hit for power and have high strikeout numbers and you're going to play for a coach that likes to play small ball and bunt and hit and run and steal, that's probably not the best fit for you because he's one of his strengths of what he likes to do. Versus if you go to a school that likes to hit home run, approach of their offense and the coach's philosophy is just to play the long ball. That's one of the other things that you guys need to do after you look at each program is figure out how your style of what kind of player you are and this is where you have to look yourself in the mirror guys and be real with yourself of who you are figure out that coach's style and figure out how that aligns with you to give yourself the most success for the next four years or two years to put yourself in a successful position another piece of advice I can give you guys because it is a lot of guys first time really getting away from home and being on their own make sure you're comfortable with the distance as far as how far you are um, I know that's a small minor thing but it does play a factor and one of my last pieces of advice I can give to you guys do what's best for you and your future make your own decision I know when you're going to be going through this process you're going to be hearing voices from all kinds of different places telling you what you should do you're going to have the family that has the loyalty to a specific school and they may be pushing you to go to that school or they may have they may be pushing you not to go to another school I understand what that kind of pressure can be like because you don't want to disappoint anybody I understand that but at the end of the day you guys it's your life you're the one that has to live with that college experience for the next four or five years while that other person may be proud or disappointed about where you do or don't go they're not the ones that are in your shoes going through that experience it's you if you pick a school that you're not going to enjoy or that it wasn't your decision those next four or five years of college are going to be very stressful and this you're not going to be able to enjoy them the same. So I stress the importance of making your own decision as an individual. Figure out where you want to go, take advice from people, listen to people, be a sponge and absorb their opinions and what they can tell you is the pros and cons to going to specific schools. But at the end of the day, after you weigh your options, it has to be your choice. You have to do what is right for yourself don't do it for other people. Do it for you. Do it for your career. Do it for your education. And I promise you will have a glorious four years. That's the best advice that I can give you guys. I hope it helps. Number one, not letting your friends' journeys determine your timeline. Keep a narrow vision, tunnel vision, straight ahead, straight forward, focusing on you, focusing on your journey and your opportunities. And don't let anybody else be the influence to your journey. Number two, defining your goals and figuring out which program best fits those goals for you. This is a big key piece of advice you guys because you have to be able to go somewhere that you're able to develop, you have to go somewhere that you're able to play, or you have to go somewhere where you're able to get an education 
and enjoy college. Enjoy the experience. Topic number three, make sure that the coaching style aligns with who you are as a player because you don't want to go to a school where you're not the type of player that the coach desires and it's going to be hard for him to fit you into his lineup or his strategy or his philosophy because you don't fit the mold that he's looking for. Piece of advice number four, it's small, I know you guys, but consider the, the distance from home factor and how that's going to affect you. If you're someone that's, that does well with being away from home or if you're someone that gets homesick, those are two things that you guys need to take into account while you're going through the adjustment period during your freshman and sophomore year of being on your own away from home and your family at college. Piece of advice number five, you guys, making the decision for yourself, doing what's best for you and not letting anybody outside of you make the decision for you. You need to be able to look yourself in the mirror at the end of the day and be happy with the decision that you made and go on with your college experience and be able to have a blast because it's one of the best times of your life. And playing college baseball is, words don't justify how awesome it is and how much fun it is and just the daily grind. In the moment, it sucks doing all the extra BS running and workouts that you do, the 5 a.m. punishment running or you know the team lifting at 6 a.m., just the team bonding experience, the team get-togethers. There's no better experience than that, you guys, and, and the bond that it creates, the friends that you make, character traits that you learn of being able to, to learn how to communicate with, with teammates from different backgrounds and being able to make connections with them and having differences and learning from other people from their point of view. Those are all big aspects of college that you get that are all learning, life learning opportunities that you get from playing college baseball. I can't stress it enough you guys, if you had the desire to play college baseball, pursue it to the fullest. I'll say that for every guy watching this video, there is truly an opportunity for you to play somewhere. I promise. Even if you're not a guy that made his high school team, there is an opportunity for you to play in college. Put in the work and get your name in front of coaches. If you want to go NAIA, you want to go D3, you want to go D2, you want to go D1, you want to go JUCO, there's plenty of opportunities, you guys. If you want to get an education and you want to play college baseball, you just have to seek them out and figure out one best fits you. If this is something you guys need advice on or need more insight or would like some more help, feel free to send me a message and I will work with you one on one to help you get to college. You can send me a message on Instagram. Just let me know you guys. I'm all for giving back and helping as many guys have just as many experiences as I have along the way. I've had a fantastic career and it's this career is still going. I still have big plans for myself in the future of the next two, three, five years. And I have no intention of stopping anytime soon. But the more experiences that I can have and, and learning on my past experiences, if I can give those experiences back to the next next generation of the game and help you guys. And I try to be as transparent as possible. I like making these videos. I like doing these helpful videos. If this is something you enjoy. Leave this video a thumbs up, but I like doing it because I like being able to give back with you guys and connect and see as many kids possible achieve their dream, whether that's playing college baseball, professional baseball, or making it to the MLB. That's what I want to see for everybody. For everybody. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Like, like I said, if you did, all I ask is that you can subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, connect with me on Instagram, send my community a text. And as always, I appreciate you guys for watching. I'm so grateful for you guys, and I will see you next time.